The problem reads, calculate the surface integral of the scalar function f equal to x plus y plus z on the triangle with vertices a100, b010, and c001. Now this problem will have several places in which we could use simpler calculations and simpler formulas, but we're going to solve it using only standard formulas so that if you get a harder problem, you can solve it with what we have done. In the end, we will check that if we had used the simplifications, we get the same answer. So what does the problem say? Calculate the surface integral of the scalar function. So this is what we're looking for, the surface integral of the function. We see an f, no problem, but we don't see an s. Now the nice thing about triangles is the triangle has three points and three points also determine a plane. So the surface is going to be the plane containing the triangle. So we need to find the equation of the surface S, which in this case is the equation of the plane containing the triangle. How do we determine the equation of a plane? The standard form says we need a point and a normal vector. Now this ABC here has nothing to do with those points ABC there. These are components. And then the formula for the equation of the plane is the standard formula. Well, we need a point and a normal. We have three points and no normal. But we know that the vector AB lies on the plane. The vector AC lies on the plane. So the vector product of AB and AC must be a vector normal to the plane. So what we're going to do is find the directional vectors of AB and AC and calculate the vector product to get N. First of all, let's pick our P. Which point? We'll just pick the first one. One, zero, zero. Like I said, we don't need to use the vectors. We can just use their directional vectors. So R, A, B. We're abusing notation. We'll write B minus A. And so that is 0 minus 1, so minus 1. 1 minus 0, so 1. 0 minus 0, so 0. The directional vector for AC, C minus A, is 0 minus 1, so minus 1. 0 minus 0, so 0. And 1 minus 0, so 1. We find the vector product and it's going to be our normal vector. So n equals r a b, vector product r a c. Draw a little determinant, i j k, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1 equals i and we have 1 minus 0, so 1, minus j, and we have minus 1 plus 0, so minus 1, plus k, and we have 0 plus 1, so just plus 1. So i plus j plus k, actually we need the components, they are 1, 1, 1. So this ABC here is this 1, 1, 1 here. So our surface, which is the equation of the plane, is 1 for this A times X minus, and then X0, using this point, so 1 here, plus this 1 times y minus, and then our point y, 0, is 0, plus final one there, c, z minus, and z0 is 0, equals, equals 0. So we get x plus y plus z, and then our constants are minus 1, 0, 0. Minus 1 on the other side is 1. 
Now we're not going to circle this because we have to see what kind of formula we need in order to solve this. So let's go look at our formula page. So here is our formula page for surface integrals. We're looking at this or this. We don't have s in parametric form, but we can write s in explicit form. So we need this formula here. So here's that formula, and we want to write z in explicit form. So z, how much is it? 1 minus x minus y. 1 minus x minus y. So this is the z that we will be using in this formula. So the first thing we need to do is find f of x, y, and z, where we substitute z. So we have f equals x plus y plus a z equals x plus y plus 1 minus x minus y. And this equals 1. And so that's what we're going to substitute here is 1. Our square root part, we need the partial derivatives. Delta z delta x is minus 1. Delta z delta y is also minus 1. So this square root is 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1, the square root of 3. So let's put this information and start to solve our surface integral. So we have this information from our previous page and we are calculating the double integral of s, f, ds. That's this part here. It's the double integral over dxy, which is the projection of x onto the xy plane. f is 1, the square root is 3, and we have dx dy. Let's put the square root out front and we would have dxy dx dy. So what are we looking at? The projection of s, or rather this triangle, onto the xy plane. So that makes it a triangle with points where z equals 0. So a would be 1, 0. We just take the first two coordinates. B would be 0, 1, first two coordinates, and C would be 0, 0, the first two coordinates. What does that look like? 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0. So we're looking at this triangle here. That is the projection of this triangle onto the xy plane. So this is dxy here. How would we integrate that? We usually start with y going from 0 to the function, and the function in this case is a line. So we need the equation of this line. We use this as our main point. This is our second point. So we have y minus this 0 equals the change in y, 0 minus 1, over the change in x, 1 minus 0, x minus this x0. So if we work all this out, it turns out to be y equals minus x plus 1. So y would go from 0 to minus x plus 1, and then x is going from 0 to 1. So what do we get? We get our double integral of f ds is equal to, the square root of 3 is up front here, and then we have our innermost integral is from 0 to minus x plus 1 dy, because we have no function here, and then for dx we have from 0 to 1 dx. So we need to solve this integral. So we have the square root of 3 and 0 to 1 dx. 
Now this has no function here, so it's just the difference in the two boundaries. So it's just minus x plus one. And then we come down here, the square root of three. And we have uh, integrating with respect to x, we have minus x squared over two plus x from zero to one. So the square root of three, the first boundary gives us minus one half plus one, and the second boundary gives us a zero. So all together we have, this is one half, oh, the square root of three times one half. So the square root of three over two is our answer to this problem. Now we're gonna have a little discussion about all the shortcuts we could have taken in route. So we wanted to look at the several different shortcuts we could have taken if we knew many, many formulas in our head. And the first one would be that we need the equation of the surface S, which is the equation of the plane containing the triangle. And we would notice that this point is on the x-axis with a equal to one. This point is on the y-axis with b equal to one. And this point is on the z-axis with c equal to one and we could have used the formula that says the equation of that plane is given by x over a plus y over b plus z over c equal to one and immediately gotten x plus y plus z equals one, which would have given us our z equals one minus x minus y but that only works for special points and you have to know this formula. The second shortcut we could have seen is when we found out that f was one. Remember f was x plus y plus z and when we substituted x plus y plus one minus x minus y, we got one. We could have stopped there and said, oh, that means we have no function here. So we have s ds, which would mean we need the area of this triangle. So the area of the triangle. But then of course we need to know how to calculate the area of this triangle. Maybe you're good at that. The area of the triangle is the area of an equilateral triangle. That's not so hard to see. But what is its side? And you have to find, figure out that its side is the square root of two. And then you have to remember for, that the formula for that is the square root of three over four times a squared, which is the square root of three over four times the square root of two squared, which it does indeed give us the square root of three over two, which was our answer. So if you remember a whole bunch of formulas, this whole problem could have been solved in these three lines. If you didn't remember this formula, you could have gotten down to the next level, which was SFDS equals the square root of three. And then we had DXY of DX DY, which would have been the square root of three times the area of the projected triangle. All right? And that is perhaps easier to see because that had a base of one and a height of one. So one half times one times one is one half. So that would have been the square root of three times one half, which again would give us the square root of three over two. So there were several places where we could have used shortcuts, but some of those shortcuts won't be available to us in a different problem. So. It's better to know the whole way how to do it.